Hello everyone, it's me Uncle John. Today I am going to read at 6.60.45 The Truth About Bats Chapter 6 Ranger Mike had pitched his tent next to the bus cabin. We better start setting up the nets now, Miss Fizzle, he said. He disappeared into the tent for a few minutes. When he came out, he had a long black boots that came up to his hips. Miss Fizzle put on long boots too, but hers had red bad shapes on them. We need these hip waders, rangers might explain, because we'll be going into the river. That water is mighty cold this time of year. Ranger Mike unfolded a square of fine black netting. It looked like a huge hairnet. We call this a mist net because it's as that the filmy as mist, the ranger said. Miss Frizzle took some tall poles and waded across the river. In about half an hour, she and the ranger Mike had stretched two mist nets across the river. One net was higher than the other. They were nearly invisible. The nets are right about places where bats come to hunt insects. Ranger Mike explained. You mean the bats are going to fly right into the nets and get trapped? Tim asked. Some bats will get caught because their sonar won't pick up the netting fast enough. Ranger Mike said the net doesn't hurt them. And this one, this is one way scientists learn about where different kinds of bats live. The bats are identified and counted, and then they are let go. Why are there two nets? Wanda asked. Some kinds of bats fly low, and some fly high. Ranger Mike told her, the spotted bat, for example, flies high. So we need the higher net if we hope to catch one. In the lower net, we might get some yummies. Yummies? We all ask at once. We're not going to eat them, are we? Arnold asked. He looked a little sick. Don't worry, kids. That's just a nickname for the uh, Yama bat, said the ranger. It's one of the most common bats around here, but we might catch other kinds too. Yosemite has 15 different types of bats. That's 15 too many for me, Phoebe said. May I be excused? D.A. went to stand beside her. Don't worry, Phoebe, she said. The bats won't bother us. Just then, we heard the, the clanging of a bell. Chatan called Miss Fizzle. She had changed into another bat outfit and had a campfire going on the bank of the river. We're having a cookout, Carlos said. Hot dogs, hamburgers, baked beans, and potato chips Arnold said, all right. Everybody dug in and enjoyed the cook cookout, even Phoebe. As the sun went down, we sat around the fire, roasting marshmallows. Ouch, I cried and slapped my neck. Mosquitoes, they are biting me too, Wanda said. I hate mosquitoes. Ranger Mike looked out over the river. It was nearly dark. The insects are out, Ranger Mike said. It's time for the bats to wake up. Now may I be excused? Phoebe asked. But the fun is just beginning, Miss Frizzle told her. Here are your night peepers to put them on and you will be able to see in the dark. It was terrific. With the special glasses, I could see almost as if it were daytime. I think we just got one in the net, Ranger Mike called. He waded into the river and came back with something cupped in his hand. It's a yum yum, he said, a young yama. That's a bat, Phoebe said. It looks more like a brown cotton ball. It's a bat, all right. Ranger Mike gently pulled on the wings so that we could see the shape. The bat's wings are something like our hands with the thumb and fingers. The ranger pointed out, sometimes bats use their wings to catch insects. The bat traps the insect against its body, then eats it up. 
from the Dasko means fizzle. Scientific name for bat is a chiroptera, which is a Greek word meaning hand wing. The arm, hand, and leg bones support the wing membrane. The membrane is made up of two thin layers of skin containing blood vessels, nerves, and tendons. Only bats that use echolocation have the extra little flap of skin called uh, the tragus. I didn't know that a bat has fingers and thumbs. Phoebe said, bats are amazing creatures. The more you know about them, the more you like them, Ranger Mike said. He cupped the tiny yum yum in his hands again. Then Ranger Mike raised his arms. I'm letting this one go now. He said, let's see what else we have caught in our nets. He opened his hands and the little bat flew off into the night. Chapter 7 The class stood on the back of the bank of the river, watching the bat zipping in from all directions. These night peepers are the greatest, Kisha said. Look how fast those bats draw in on the insects. That's their sauna at work. Miss Frizzle said, Frizzle said, most of the bats darted over around the mist net, but every now and then, one got caught. Here's a big brown ranger mark called as he untangled the struggling bat. It doesn't look very big to me. Carlos said when Ranger Mike showed us the brown furry creature clinging to his globe, it's a medium-sized bat. Really, the ranger told us, bigger than its cousin, the little brown bat, with its wings folded up like this, it looks small, but in the air, the wings just spread out to more than a foot across. There are big brown bats in my neighborhood, T.A. said. I have never seen one, but the people down the street had one in the attic one summer. That's not surprising, Ranger Mike said. Brown bats, big and little, get around. In the U.S., they live in all 48 of the continental states. No sooner had we let the big brown bat go than we had more action at the net. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Look what's coming in now, Keisha cried. We turned around to see a, f to see a flyer with the enormous wings, maybe two feet across, swooping above the, above the river. In the next instant, it seemed to stop in, in midair. It had flown right into the taller mist net. How to find the bug? It sends out a series of ultrasonic clicks as it flies through the air. As the bat comes, go, comes closer to the insect, clicks get faster. The ultrasonic waves bounce off the insect and back to the bat's ear. Is it a bird? Phoebe asked. No need to worry about that, Phoebe. Said Miss Frizzle. The birds are already asleep. Unless I miss my guess, our visitor is waiting for not for feather. You're right. Miss Frizzle, Ranger Mike said, this is a bat. And then some, come and meet the Western Mastiff, the largest bat in the USA. Phoebe started to back away, but DA, they grabbed the hand. Come on, Phoebe, you don't want to miss this. Ranger Mike held the Mastiff gently, but firmly, its body was almost as long as his hand. It has the face of a dog, Carlos said, weird, does it bite? Phoebe asked, only in self-defense. Ranger Mike explained, but it's best not to mess around with any bats. Some have strong jaws and could give you a bad bite. Then you could die, cried Phoebe. Bats carry a bad deeds called the rabbis. That's what I've heard. Yes, a few bats do have rabbis, uh, said the ape, but most bats are healthy. Skunks and foxes are more likely to have rabbis than bats. True, Ranger Mike said, but even though bats probably will not harm you, you should never try to pick up a bat or any other wild animal. Leave that to experts like me. What sharp teeth you have. Bats use their sharp teeth to chew their food into tiny bits. Bats that feed on soft insects 
such as mass, have weak jaws and soft bite, but bats that feed on beetles or other crunchy insects have stronger jaws to bite down hard. Uh, a word from Dorothy and some animals that have rabbis act wild and even warm at the mouth. But a sick bat seems quiet and tame. Don't be fooled. Any bat that'll let you get close to it is probably sick. Ranger Mike had to climb onto a rock to set the mastiff free. This one needs at least six feet feet of free fall to get airborne. The ranger explained he held the mastiff as high as he could then let go. The bat dipped and soared off on it enormous wings. It was getting very late, and we still had not seen one spot of Miss Frizzle's spotted bat. I hope that bat shows up soon, Wanda said with a yawn. I don't think I can stay awake much longer. The bat may not show up at all, Wanda, Ranger Mike said. Not many people have ever seen a spotted bat, and we don't know much about its habit. We think these bats might live in the cliffs near our rivers and lakes. One was caught here in Yosemite a few years ago. How big is it? Wanda wanted to know. About the size of the big brown, Ranger Mike said. It eats mostly moth and has a voice like no other bat. People are more likely to hear it than to see it. Hear it? Keisha asked. I thought we couldn't hear bats. We can hear bat calls that are ultrasonic. Ranger Mike said, but some bats, such as a spotted bat, make echolocation sounds that are not quite so high-pitched. People can hear them very well. Does the call of the spotted bat sound anything like that? Miss Frizzle asked. We all stood still and listened, trying to hear what Miss Frizzle had heard. First, there was nothing. Then a harsh, high-pitched tick-tick, tick-tick filled the air. That's it, Ranger Mike whispered. That's the spotted bat. Where, where? We all turned toward the sound and stared as hard as we could through our night peoples, peepers. Then Miss Frizzle, Frizzle walked to the edge of the river and pulled a little net back from the pocket of her bag outfit. She opened it and out flew a cloud of silvery moths. They seemed to blink like a fireflies in the darkness. In the next instant, the dark shape of a bat came zooming in. It flew over our heads and we could see the white belly of the spotted bat. It caught several mouse and was swooping down for another when it flew right into our mist net. Chapter 8 Amazing! Ranger Mike said he waded into the cold water and carefully untangled the prize. Well, Miss Frizzle, he said as he came back on shore with the bat, we are mighty lucky tonight. He held up the bat with one hand and we crowded uh, around. Even Phoebe was eager to get a look at this unusual catch. Where are the spot? D.A.S. Ranger Mike turned the bat so we could see if it's furry bat. Three white spots showed brightly on its black, black uh, fur. The spotted bat is a rare species. Check out those bunny ears, Carlos said. Just like in the picture Miss Frizzle showed us, Ranger Mike stroked the long fur with his finger. I have read that some spotted bats don't like to be held, but this one doesn't seem to mind, he said. The next thing I knew, I was reaching out. I touched the bat's back with my finger. It really was very wealthy. You touched the bear. Hey, he's not bad, I said. I started petting the bat with two fingers. He seems to like me. I'm going to call him Bugs because of his big ears. Let me try, Carlos said. I like those pink ears. Just this one, said Ranger Mike. We couldn't do this with every wild animal, but Bugs seemed to be taking it in stride. One by one, all the kids stepped up to pet Bugs. Last came D.A. and Phoebe. You first, Phoebe said. D.A. stroked the bath. See, he's a good bat. Go ahead and touch him. Phoebe, you'll be surprised. Phoebe will never do it. Tim blurted out. She has better phobia. I do not, said Phoebe. I don't even know what that is. It means you're afraid of bats, Carlos told her. Oh, yeah? 
Phoebe took a deep breath and lifted her hand. Wait, I cried. I have to get a picture of this. I ran into the bus cabin and got my camera. Phoebe touched the box and gave a little squeal. Then she grinned. I pushed the shutter button. Click. Another great shot for my album. I really like bugs, Phoebe said. Could we take him back to school with us? Miss Frizzle, he could be our class pet. It would be fun to have a lizard and a bat. I wish we could. Phoebe, Miss Frizzle said, but as my cousin, B. B. Free says, wild animals home is a place where it can, it can roam. Box needs wide open spaces to survive. She gave the bat an extra special pet. Not only that, kids, Ranger Mark said, this bat is too precious to nature for us to even think about taking him away from his home. Spotted bats are on the government's list of rare animals that need special protection. I never thought I would ever see one this close. Yes, I guess it would be a shame to take Bugs away from this beautiful place, Phoebe said. I'm sure he will be glad to get back to his cliff, Ranger Mike said. Ranger Mike lifted Bugs up as high as he could. The bat took off, ears pointing forward as it took to the air. Goodbye, Bugs, we called. We all waved until we could not see him anymore. Chapter 9. After Bugs had disappeared from view, Miss Frizzle and Ranger Mike started to take down the mist net. We headed for the bunk bed in the bus cabin and wrapped ourselves in the red woolly, woolly blanket. The next thing I knew, the sun was coming in uh, the bus cabin window. Rise and shine, sleepy head. Miss Frizzle called, it's almost afternoon, you must be starving. Miss Frizzle had fixed a big lunch for us. Hot dogs, hamburgers, baked beans, and potato chips. Yum! The food was as good today as it had been on the night before. Time for some fun in the sun, Miss Frizzle said. Ranger Mike has a surprise for you. There on the river was a bright orange rubber boat with a motor. Everybody grab a life preserver called Ranger Mike and come on board. Cool, DA said. We climbed into the boat, and Ranger Mike pulled a cord to start the motor. We, we flew along the river like the wind. We stopped at the base of a, a waterfall and climbed the steps up the cliff to the top. Ranger Mike posed for a picture with the class. Click. Another great shot for my album. This turned out to be fun after all, Arnold said. The best. Phoebe agreed. It was hard to believe that the day was almost over. Ranger Mike took us back upriver to the bus cabin. Have a good trip home. He said, I'm mighty glad you came. So long. Have a good summer. He got into his jeep and drove off down the road. To the bus, Miss Frizzle called. The bus cabin seemed to whirl around in a blur. When it stopped, it had changed into the copter again. Miss Frizzle pushed the control buttons and we lifted off. Soon the copter turned into a jet and we were above the snowy peaks of Yosemite, heading east. We hadn't been airborne for long when the barometer started beeping like mad. Get ready, the freezer call from the copy. We are making one more stop. Now what? Arnold said, I have a funny feeling we are about to miss some more, bo more bats, I said. I was right. Not much later, we landed in a parking lot in a large city. Uh, the Fritz came out of the cockpit, wearing a cowboy hat and boots. Welcome to Texas, the, the baddest state in the country. Miss Frizzle passed our cowboy hats for all for us all. No other city is home to so many different kinds of bats. 32 at last count. You are in the capital city of Austin, a very special place for bats. You will see what I mean. We followed Miss Frizzle to a bridge in the middle of the busy city. The sun was setting and a lot of people were standing along the railings. They looked as if they were waiting for something to happen. As the sun went down, the clouds turned deep purple. Some bats flew out 
from underneath the bridge, then dozens more. A few circled above us, right over our heads. Soon the sky was filled with hundreds of flying bats, maybe even thousands. These are Mexican free-tailed bats, class, Miss Frizzle told us. Each summer, more than a million of them return to this bridge from Mexico to have their young. The people of Austin are always glad to see them again, and no wonder the bats eat from 15,000 to 30,000 pounds of insects in a single night. I guess bats really are our friends, Phoebe said. And that's no miss. I checked my camera. There was only one shot left on the wall. I aimed at the stream of soaring wings beneath the purple clouds and click another great picture for my album. Let's help bat. Every year, thousands of bats are destroyed by pesticides, poisons, or senseless killing. Few bats mean more insects. More insects mean more disease and more damage to crops that provide the food we eat. We should all do our part to protect the bats that dive and dart in the night sky. Soon we were back in the bus jet on our way home. I can't wait to see all the pictures you took. Ralphie, Wanda said. Me either, I said. I bring them to school and I get them developed. A few days later, I walked into Miss Frizzle's room with my photo album. Everyone gathered around. Look at us at the great bat cave, Tim said. I hope that they have put a gate on it by now. I like this one of Ranger Mark setting up the Miss Net. Wanda said, he was a nice guy. It was easy to see what Phoebe's favorite picture was. Oh, here I am with Buck, she said. I'll never forget that little spotted bat. I knew that was true for all of us. Guess the answers. Miss Frizzle's class learned a lot about bats on their field trip to Yosemite, but they still had some questions. When they got back to the classroom, here are their questions and the answers. Number one, Arnold asked, how long does a bat usually live? The bats are about a, a longer lifespan than other animals that size. Small rodents like mice, for example, live only one or two years. But bats that survive the first winter may live many, many years. The average is about 15. Some live to be in their 20s, and some even get to be 30 years old. Wow, DA asks, do all bats live in colonies? No, many kinds of bats live and feed together in groups of a few to a few thousand. But some bats, such as the red bat and the hoary bat, go out on their own individual hunt and sleep by themselves in trees. These bats get together at mating time, then mothers stay together when raising pups. Also, some that spend the summer in northern areas may go south together in the winter. Phoebe asks, how does a mother bat in a large colony tell which puppy is hers? Newborn pup clings to its mother's body until it is half grown. Then it hangs before it hangs beside her until it's ready to fly off on its own. If the two get separated, the baby sends out a special SOS call. It keeps calling until its mother comes. She can tell by the puff's voice and smell that the baby is hers. The Carlos asks, how far, how fast can a bat fly? The Mexican free-tailed bat flies 30 miles an hour at top speed. But the big brown bat is a record holder. It zips along at 40 miles an hour. Fast flying bats can cover a lot of ground. Some free-tailed bats were seen to travel a distance of 80 miles in no more than two nights. That's over 40 miles a night. Wanda asks, humans can hear the bats at location calls, but other bats can. How loud do the calls sound to them? Echolocation sounds of most bats are really ear splitting to other bats, but as loud as a smoke detector going off. Luckily for the bat, it has a special muscle that close its ears whenever it sends out signal. If it didn't have this muscle, the bat would make itself deaf. Chapter number six, Keisha asks, how can I get insect eating bats to come and live in my backyard? Since 1980, thousands of Americans have put up special wooden bed houses to attract bats to parks, forests, and backyards. Bed house that is just two feet tall and wide and five to six inches deep can attract nursery colony. 
of as many as 200 to 300 bats. You can buy or make a bat house yourself for information and contact Bat Conservation International, PO Box, Austin, blah, 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 internet address, batcon.org. The end.